When you say at that time that WCW had reportedly had one of the highest paid rosters in the history of the business, and you may not have said exactly that, but I think that was your point. It's not really true. A lot of the a lot of the guys, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, anybody that came over from you know Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, those guys made more money in WWF than they made for me in a guarantee. But the the difference is they had to work more days. For example, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash. I only go to them because I do remember kind of some specifics of their agreements. I feel stupid talking to you in my socks, by the way. <laughs> but. Those guys came to me in part, probably for cr some creative frustration and maybe knowing the handwriting was on the wall for them. But what they told me, what they said to me while looking me in the eye was, we can't work 300 days a year anymore. My, my, live, event, my live event schedule had a maximum, including television, of 180 days. That was very attractive to them. And they were getting a guarantee from me that was maybe as much, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. But it wasn't hugely um, different from what they were making at the end of the year from WWF. The difference was for me, it was a guarantee with fewer dates. From the WWF, it was discretionary, which it still kind of is. And it required them to be away from their families and travel 300 plus days a year. Because remember, if you have to, you know, it's like, I, you know, I come here, you know, I'm only here for four nights in the UK. But I had two days of travel to get here on the way in and hopefully only one day on the way out. So, you know, 300 days a year is a lot of freaking days when you add travel on top of that. So the guys would get home, they'd be beat up, they'd be burnt out, they'd been on the road for 10 days, two weeks, sometimes longer, and they get to be home for two days and they get to pack their shit and do it all over again. So they, a lot of guys came to me more for, from the WWE, more for, for the lifestyle and the security than the money. But they're not going to tell you that because it doesn't sound cool. The other thing is WCW at the time, we had no licensing and no merchandising, right? Because again, I took over WCW probably in, really in, not until 1994. At that point, you couldn't sell licensing or merchandising in W. You couldn't give it away. Nobody wanted it. That's why Slim Jim was such an important deal for us because it was one of the first times, not one of, it was the first time that we had a real sponsor. And that changed things for us. But up until that time, we didn't have all the revenue streams, licensing, merchandising, pay-per-view, all of those things that the WWE to this day, the ta including me, by the way, I still get a check once a quarter. It's not much, but I get one because of stuff that I did 10 years ago. And that revenue for, for top talent is significant. That's why the WWE didn't have to give anybody guarantees because they could dangle the future to that talent in a way that I couldn't. If you were a talent, and you were thinking about making a move, and you were, you were busting your ass, and you were on the road, and you only saw your kid maybe three days a month, and you're beat up, and you were making a million dollars a year. Or you could work 180 days and get a guaranteed check for 750. What would you do? And, and that's, that's, what, that's why we were giving guarantees. Yes, we paid some guys more money than they deserve, but you gotta remember, when you've got 12 or 15 guys on your roster at that level, two or three of them are at the top. Three, four, five of them are kind of one step down from the top. You gotta kind of keep that whole thing pretty comfortable because those guys are gonna go back and forth. So it's not like you could only pay one or two or three guys you know, what they could make in the WWE and then just give everybody else you know, a bucket of chicken and a six pack of soda. You, got, you, had to kind of keep every, you had to keep some level of parity. And that was a challenge. It was an unfortunate thing. But it, it belies the narrative of A.T. Americ just spending Ted Turner's money to put WWE out of business. That wasn't true. I hope that answered your question. Uh, but at the same time, no matter who you compare me to, uh, I, I'm nothing close in a lot of ways and I'm well above and beyond because if you look at just my 
my physical package along with, don't get excited, uh, but my, my physical package, so to speak, uh, along with my, uh, it, it, the personality that goes along with it, uh, it's something that's never been seen before.